Let's get started. So, here's a high level uh, overview of the program center. So, this evening, we'll do a quick overview of the California Dog Search Program, learn more about the four core objectives, um, and that might align with some of the projects that we're going to be talking about. Then, we'll open it up to a group discussion where we are hoping to hear from you all uh, before closing out the next steps and um, how you can continue to stay in. Right. So before you really get started, I'd like to recognize our project partners that are here in the space with us. Uh, we have Sacramento Asia Pacific Chamber, and that is somewhere for its companies. Uh, we also have Captain Canepa on the main team. Uh, my name is Gary Reed, and thank you for the thread. Also joined by our partners, Faith McKinney at um, the Black Artist Foundry, and Alberto from uh, Sacramento Building Property Communities, and then my two from Everyday uh, Impact Consulting. And if our Valley Vision folks can raise their hands and just show us who you are, there's a few of them in the space. Uh, those are our regional conveners. And then lastly, we're also working with Civic Well, who is planning to make it tonight. Um, so, a little bit about California Jobs First for those of you who this may be your first meeting or might need a little recap. California Jobs First is a six a $600 million fund that was invested in the statewide project in alignment with equity, sustainability, and high quality jobs uh, throughout 13 regions in California. Sacramento Yolo is a part of the larger capital region, also comprised of Colusa, El Dorado, Nevada, Placer, and then Yuba Center. We're now in different serving as our regional convener and fiscal agent. While the, youth, or while the Sacramento Yolo partners do local investment activities, um, we're also working together with diverse representation to guide you for the program in this uh, right. So what are we doing here? First and foremost, um, the, the outcome of this project is that we have as a region, the whole capital region, has a portfolio of projects that are here to the program objectives and are designed to affect further investment. So we're really looking to hear, learn, and uh, have a session with you all to help identify those projects and also to help identify what some of the folks in your community might need to engage in this process. And lastly, um, I just want to make clear that at the end of this engagement, ultimately the leadership council that will be included by Valley Vision is going to help us put together that portfolio of projects, but the state is ultimately the center of the So this will spend a few moments um, taking a look at this graphic, which can help illustrate how all of the players involved are engaged in this work together. Um, this meeting here is at the top at the South Regional uh, City. You guys are all participating at that top level um, as part of the collaborative. I mentioned the Leadership Council earlier. That Leadership Council will just be that by that vision. I can say they have had their first meeting um, that are still kind of getting their band together. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, Valley Vision is our regional convener. Uh, so they're supporting all of the work in all of the different settings. Excellent. So a few slides back, we talked about um, high quality jobs. And what we mean when we say that is that a job pays a livable wage, provides health insurance benefits, allows for career advancement, and does not harm employees or the environment. And as we continue to engage in this conversation as we move through some of the discussion, we encourage you to start thinking about what a high quality job looks like for you or the community that you serve. We also are going to talk about products, and you might be wondering what kind of products uh, should be raised and elevated that way. And really, we have about 750 million dollars state I that's going to be invested in projects that support the community-led climate for our country. So you can see on the slide behind me that there's uh exploratory and mass mile projects. Those those have those have 162 million dollars of that 150 million dollar uh total cost available. And then the ready to go project uh comprises of the 268 million and the so, a exploratory project can be defined as 
in a very early stage of development. So it's like the like staff of the Angle project. The Bahana project has completed the durable assessments and are considered feasible and viable projects. These projects have undergone initial steps for development unless there are a few additional hurdles, um, like site selection permitting, environmental review, or uh, being considered ready to go. Ready to go projects, on the other hand, have completed, have completed all necessary and possible steps to be ready for implementation upon receiving that project. As an early QR code, so if you guys are interested in learning more about the project guidelines, project readiness guidelines, feel free to pull out your phone and scan the QR, QR code line. So I just want to give a little bit of a recap of our last meeting together. Um, the second round table was held with attendance by a variety of industries representing education, government, local organizations working in areas between youth and community health. This multi-sectoral attendance was key for us to learn about the industry conditions, opportunities, gaps, and growth, as well as some of the challenges. Um, our team, the project team here, give an overview of the project. That and the approach that the Sacramento Yellow Team is taking, um, followed by Al Yujin, who shared some of the uh, research that Cities GPS put together. Um, we also provided an opportunity for both community to respond to some of that research and learn a little bit for uh, our feedback and have discussion around what resonated and maybe what didn't resonate with some of the research that we provided. So I'm going to talk to Renee from the Value Vision team. Um, who's going to cover some of the project selection process and uh, share a little bit more about the qualifying that you have first objective. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for being here today. We have a taste for not your schedule to be here, but this, is, this process is really only going to work if we do all show up and stay engaged and be collaborative. So it really means a lot that you're here to be taking to be with us. I'm going to share a little bit of information when I go to try to get off of for a second. I'm going to ask uh, forgiveness from here. Um, but I just want to say we're hearing about the term California Jobs First, which was formerly known as CERF, the California Economic Resilience Fund. So that is the funding source for that that we're doing right now. You're also seeing a logo up here that says we prosper together. I'm mean, just going to call that out too. So what that logo is all about is this inclusive economic development roadmap that we're working on intended to exist beyond the funding that is being provided by the state with California Jobs First. So, you know, some of you may have been about state budget shortfalls or have concerns about where different funding is going to come from. Um, a lot of this money is, it has been already allocated, um, but then in addition, this is intended to be an ongoing initiative beyond the state funding. So what we're doing is building a collaborative, inclusive economic roadmap that can exist for our region um, in, in the best of cases in perpetuity, something we all agree on and a shared vision. So I just want to call that out. There's some key values in this process, and one is open collaboration. We need to build bridges and learn together. There may be some times where we've had interactions with each other in other phases of economic development or workforce development or other ways that we build community life together that maybe things have rubbed wrong or maybe things have gone completely well. Um, but we're asking folks still to come together even if there have been challenges in the past and have a posture of openness and humility because that's what it's gonna take for us to advance in this process in this region. Another value is uplifting diverse voices, so recognizing the systemic um, issues in our region and in our nation. Uh, we have to do things differently in order to get a result, and that includes uplifting voices that we haven't heard from before. Additionally, this is intended to be by our community for our community, so the uh, collaborative itself includes everyone who wants to get involved in this process. Um, the Leadership Council was seated with very diverse representation, including from business, industry, geographic representation, also um, disadvantaged communities, specific communities, um, labor, also tribal representatives who all have a voice at the table. And Valley Gibson did facilitate this process because it was actually a nominating committee 
that vetted the nominations and decided who was on the leadership council. So just so you all know, there's no decisions being made in isolation by Valley Bidwell here. This is a collaborative process, and uh, several in the room here are also on the leadership council. We have another slide. These are the four core objectives of uh, California Jobs First. So you may have heard these before, but just in case we're going to go over them again, um, the first is equity. And this is, again, really related to ensuring that diverse communities benefit from the roadmap that we all create together. Again, if you want a different result, uh, we have to do things differently. So making sure that um, voices we haven't heard from before have a seat at the table and have decision-making power. Additionally, this is a sustainability. Uh, sustainability is what's being emphasized by the state. So that is leading to a carbon neutral economy. So the projects that will be identified for priority funding will have that component to them. Job quality and job access. So this is um, in a way saying that all jobs are not created equal. We're not just creating jobs for job sake, but the efforts that would come out of this and the projects that we have priority for funding will be jobs that advance at a quality jobs threshold and criteria that's being decided on by the leadership council and that you'll all have access to as well. Um, job quality includes both wages as well as benefits uh, and an overall criteria for jobs that will be um, advanced. And then access to jobs. So recognizing that you can have great jobs, but there's not on ramps for everybody to those jobs that happened in the past. And we need to make sure that both job quality exists and the access to those jobs exists, especially for the community that has slowly been left behind. And then economic competitiveness and resilience. So this is recognizing, and I'm not an economist by trade, so I'm learning a lot through this process. And the, the data that we're getting from Brookings and City's GPS, and that information will be shared with you as it becomes more and more available. Uh, but there are components of economic development that can tell us what jobs are going to benefit our region uh, economically more than other jobs. And so that's the part about economic competitiveness that's going to come into play in the project that will have priority for funding will be brought along and that data will be shared with you unless you already know what you may. Some of that's been new to me. And then um, resilience. What is really positioning this region to... Uh, have, be able to withstand impacts or shocks. Um, God forbid we have another COVID 19 pandemic or something like that within our lifetimes, but if something were to happen like that, or even less or so, that we have some level of resilience in our community in order to navigate those without the positive I think I am now handing it over to Annette, who's going to go over some. Um, the project slash creativity. Mm -hmm. Good sound tech. I really love it. Every time I'm familiar with this. So, um, as you know, the project and the reason this large is the process. Um, and we really just want to shed some light on how we're thinking about this process, how we want to engage both, um, and how we make something very complicated. You speak, a, speak a little bit louder yeah. today. Yeah. 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 Okay. There we go. That seems better. Um, so the first step is aligning projects um, and project ideas with the four core objectives of California Jobs First, which Renee just went over. Um, but there are additional layers to product identification. Um, and I'm going to begin with these credit ID layers. So, at the very base of things, um, we want to approach credit ID through an equity framework, ensuring that any project that comes to light um, is incorporating equity and any concerns um, into the very base of it. So, first, uh, the project benefit is met the communities. What are those communities that are going to benefit? Um, and thinking through how it was built in from the ground up. Secondly, um, we have to look at project readiness. So here I went over the slide about a ready to go project, um, initial idea project, this the exact terminology. Um, but that's the second thing we to do is to finish line to account where they're ready for funding. Um, thirdly, looking at feasibility and timeline. 
um, what are additional steps to get that project to the finish line, what partnerships need to be in place, um, what additional details are needed, um, essentially just being sure that it's ready to submit the project. Next slide, please. After, so after kind of these three layers of project collection, um, we can also think about project criteria that would make a successful project. And the terms that you're seeing on this slide are in alignment with the core objectives of California Jobs First, um, but go into a little bit more detail questions that one might consider when looking at a potential project. So first of all, sustainability. Um, how will a project lead to a low carbon economy? Um, how can it help advance environmental sustainability? Um, secondly, equity. So, how will this project incorporate an equity lens? How will the benefit, what will the benefit be to the community? Or, of course, development. What types of jobs will be created through this? That's the core tenant. Who is the target workforce? Um, and what are potential workforce partnerships that can help to make a more robust workforce development benefit? Next slide, please. Okay. Economic development. Um, what about this project can help improve physical or social infrastructure? Um, and how will the project promote community wealth generation um, on an ongoing basis and after the initial funding cycle? Finally, uh, community benefits. So, how will the project address community benefits or co benefits? And some examples of those might be health, education, um, creating community gallery, gallery spaces, and environment quality. So, these are just some of the things that we can do. Um, there are going to be updates uh, in February about the project identification and online health and the projects. We're not quite there yet, but just to get your brains going um, in preparation for our labor of the study. These are some questions going on. Examples are helpful. People thought it was very nebulous. So I'm going to share, you yeah, not need to read all of this, but this is an example of a project that we've already here been queued up for funding um, throughout, through a different funding opportunity, but through the CERN, the CERN funding. Um, what you're seeing here on this slide is how even in the project description, you can see the four core values of California Jobs First, um, and it's built into the project, right? Um, so this project is from the Economic Development Council. I won't go into detail on this because I'm not going to put it in this specific project, um, but feel free to through this. And you're on time, there is a QR code where you can look at other examples from this um, funding allocation um, to show what kind of projects might be a successful project that are um, So, the next example, which I'm a little bit more familiar with, is the global, um, is the Alchemist Public Market. Um, this was funded through the same funding allocation that we on the previous slide. It was $7.8 million. Um, to fund a, a public market in downtown Sacramento in the River District, if you're familiar. Um, it includes many elements of workforce development um, and elements that specifically will benefit underserved communities. Um, it is a place-based info project to build a pipeline for underserved entrepreneurs to start new food businesses. And it will also create a community gathering space um, in the market uh, and locations for food and other vendors. If you move to the next slide, we did the same exercise again, pulling out how the core objectives of CERF are present in the project description, um, highly aligned with the overall values of the project. Um, if we move to the next slide, this is slightly less wordy version of the same thing. So, a couple examples point out the sustainability elements. This project will include an all-electric campus, and it is an infill development project, so infill development prior to equity elements. Um, it will provide quality food in a neighborhood that does not have a grocery store or good transportation options for people to be able to get to the grocery store. It also specifically is geared to provide workforce development opportunities to workers with barriers of employment. So a couple of examples of those groups were um, New immigrants to Sacramento um, or formerly incarcerated individuals. Um, and it's intended to benefit those who have the highest barriers to access. <clears throat> for job quality and access, some elements include a co working space for nonprofits, startups, businesses, and community groups. Um, it is intended to create jobs at the market um, in addition to supporting people who have business ideas and want to work outside of the market. 
Um, and there is also a job placement element um, through a social enterprise cafe that are part of the design. Finally, um, the elements of economic competitiveness and resiliency um, include support for local food businesses, um, and it will help build upon existing successful incubator programs that Alphabet CDC has worked on um, in partnership in the past. Um, so it's going to build on existing success. Next slide, please. This is a look at the three layers of project selection. Um, so, for example, the things about the equity framework that were built in from the beginning, um, anti displacement was explicitly considered in the application and strategies incorporated in prevent gentrification impacts um, by putting development in this community. It was placed in the location that lost affordable housing available with the intent for the residents of the community to be able to benefit. Um, and of course, as I said, uh, it's designed to benefit a location that has not seen much investment in the past um, and support people who have the greatest barriers to employment and work with the center. The project readiness would be categories as ready to go because it has already been funded, so I don't really need to go into that much there. Um, but it has lots of partners who are already on board. Um, some of those details are ironed out, which we would like to be able to support. Um, and overall, it is a phenomenal example of project that was kind of do as project. Um, I think that is the end of the presentation before we move into table discussion. Um, so in a moment, we're going to ask folks to turn your chairs around and form a little pod with the people who are behind you. We have some discussion prompts um, at you. We know this is a lot of information, so part of the table discussion is yeah, so we are going to be doing 35 minutes of table discussion where you'll talk amongst yourselves with some um, questions that we have, and you can come up with the questions that you have with the project team, which we will answer. There will also be an opportunity for you to share any other things that you become aware of. Um, that you're interested in bringing place in it. We will not have time for every single table to share out, so we are going to make the session um, all the tier based, so we'll call on you and have some mm -hmm. microphones. Um, that's about it. We don't have enough facilitators to work each table, so we'll ask them to be held directly, but we'll be floating around. But are there any questions about what they were doing so far? Does anyone have questions that have been presented so far? Yeah. Uh, just about the uh, Optimus uh, project. It was funded by some. Uh, I want to remember the name of the funds. Very just worthy of the funds. To call them economic yeah. development pilot. Uh, it was a pilot project that was based on the, yeah, the pilot based on the funding, the future funding that's also going to be available through California Jobs First, but they flipped from funding out early and called it pilot funding, and Alchemist was the one that got funded. So we know it has the elements of the thing looking for. Okay. So the only question that I have is for our, the job that we're being created for this project is completed. A lot of the grocery workers and things like that that I've seen don't really make even enough payments to buy a house or even to afford rent unless there's a full-time uh, position of, available there. And they were doing, um, so my question is, um, the average income, what benefits that uh, a worker would make if that was to be created in those jobs? In the alchemist jobs? I have the same question as you. I think the job quality is the one area where that project does not hit the mark that the state is saying that they want. So part of what's going to be occurring in our region is there's going to be a wage level threshold set um, by the region of what it is we're looking for to define a quality job. And that is that was not set at the time that this pilot funding was available. It was sort of an odd thing where the, the planning funding was put out for California jobs first, and then the state decided to put some funding out for pilot projects before the collaborative had been formed. Um, so, uh, so I don't necessarily know that these projects have all of the elements, but we know that they have some of the elements of state looking. So it's a good question, and I have that same thought, like, for those reaching the wage threshold that we want to qualify as a job. 
Thank you, Terry. Yeah. I do like yeah. all the other assets. Thank you for bringing that up too, so that we're keeping folks on the job. Richard. So I'm still in the fear of what we're trying to do in these table discussions. Okay, I think we're going to have to turn that right now. Yeah, we're going to have to bring by some table discussion guides in a moment, but we just want to talk about questions on that information. Any other questions on the information so far? Okay, here we Thank you. All right. So thank you all for just spending the last with your table mates, uh, had a chance to go around and just hear all the amazing conversations. So we're going to do a large uh, debrief and uh, a couple of things before we do that. I just wanted to know, uh, first of all, by a show of hands, uh, if you could share with us, or is this your first meeting with us? If you could raise your hand, we'd love to see that. All right, how many of you is this your second or third meeting? Raise your hand. Thank you, thank you for coming back. All right. Uh, just a little quick introduction. Um, my name is Mike Kutow. I'm a part of the Everyday Impact Consulting Team, working uh, and partnering with our great partners at Civic Thread. Uh, so really excited to dive into tonight's discussion. Um, so just a couple more reminders. We actually are recording this session right now um, in the back room for our Valley Vision team. So uh, we do ask that if you are sharing to please um, speak up, enunciate. This is our space, so we want to hear you. Um, but mostly we need you to speak up for the audio that of recording so that we can share this with folks who aren't in here with us tonight. So with that, I'm going to get us started with a deep breath. And so um, we have the question up on the uh, slide deck here, but we would just love to hear any volunteers that would like to get us started. And then we are as there's so many of us here that um, if you are sharing, uh, we do ask that your, your sharing feedback and input that's going to add to the uh, discussion. If you want to affirm somebody, feel free to do that, but we want to make sure that we keep it going and we hear from as many folks as we can tonight. So with that, um, anybody want to kick us off with, with sharing? Great. Great. Okay. Get this going. Get it done. <laughs> I don't need a mic. Is everybody here? Yeah. I've been here for five years. I don't know. Can you do it a little louder? So just right for this, for this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's on timeout. Hello? You guys don't need to hear me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're fine. All right. No. No. It's picking. Oh, oh. Slow, but it's working now. <laughs> All right, so number one was questions from the planning team. So a few questions that we had with the planning team, A, how are budget cuts that we've been hearing the governor right, uh, put out, how are they going to impact project and economic development in our capital region area, right? Uh, that's could have potential issues with us wanting to build the things that we want to build. Um, B, what cut of the $450 million would be utilized for our eight county coverage area, 
right? Because we know that San Diego, LA, San Francisco, they're probably going to be applying for and sucking up the majority of that $450 million, right? So we want to make sure that we're heard. We have a good project that meets all the criteria uh, and that it's going to apply and benefit our community members. Uh, see what types of jobs, careers, uh, and industries are we trying to create and impact, right? We want to make sure we're building the right things to be able to have the most effect for the money that we are provided. Um, D, what is the outcome we need in order to call this investment a success? All right, what are our goals? What are the things we want to see and how are we going to get there? E, is there an opportunity to create synergy between stakeholders, right? It, it can't just be two or three groups at this table making these decisions on a project that's going to be built. We need to make sure our voice is heard for how these projects are going to be built, because once money comes to the table, we tend to have our voices get silent. You know what I mean? Um, so question number two, I forgot to write it down because I was running out of room. Um, it's up here. Share with your table any specific projects, initiatives, or opportunities that might be a good fit into the core core objectives. So the first one that we talked about was Bosch and manufacturing facility. So what that's going to do is it's going to improve uh, job quality because those those jobs have benefits, right? They've got healthcare, they've got uh, retirement options. There's uh, there's training that has to be involved in that, so they're learning more than just one aspect of, of what they're doing there. Um, Another project that we were considering that, that's coming up or we foresee coming up is the CNU Medical Center and Training Hospital. Um, those are gonna both create jobs for teachers, doctors, nurses, medical care workers, and things of that nature to both help the, the health and welfare of the community, uh, make a, a hospital that's closer, uh, provide pharmaceutical needs and, and things like that. And Another one is Aggie Square or UC Davis projects. We know that they like to invest again in training um, college, right? Uh, creating more opportunities and, and job pathways. Another one that um, I actually recommended was uh, a senior living community, not just a senior living center, but um, an entire community. So it, it's going to be uh, addressing the need for the baby boom, right? For all of the people that were in the workforce, coming out of the workforce and getting to that age where they're going to need care and assistance, um, giving them activities, uh, the healthcare they need, again, promoting those healthcare jobs um, and, and providing for um, that group of people. Uh, another um, idea was nursing colleges. We, we've seen an impact from uh, people wanting to become nurses and they're going out of state to do it. We don't want that to be an issue here in this region. We want them to be able to have that opportunity here, again, creating all those jobs and opportunities. Um, <clears throat> another another one was adult ed schools to support manufacturing pathways. We had a uh, a discussion about that. How that that's another opportunity and dorms at community colleges. Uh, that's going to boost uh, living space for students, hopefully getting them uh, a reduced cost and, and then to be able to afford a, a living space and learn the things that they need in order to go to another career. Uh, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to move on the back for question number three. I'm not done yet. Hold on to your seats. Any questions so far? I ain't done very well. All right. Uh, number three, uh, ensuring labor standards. And that's addressing how would you strengthen the proposals you are already aware of. So labor standards, both for the careers after the project is built and during the building of the project, right? We want to make sure people are getting the health care they need. They're providing for their families. They have a retirement plan. They have um, all the things that they need to be a successful middle class uh, job, or, or even move on from that and become entrepreneurs. Um, broader partnerships uh, between labor, management, schools, making sure that everyone's at the table uh, to make sure these decisions are in the best interest of, of not just the people making money um, up at the top of the pyramid, but everybody down the most. <laughs> Um, the last one we had was having other sources of funding and leveraging them to build what communities need and want. Um, and we need a centralized grant network and proposal development in order to um, leverage more funding, not just the funding that they're making available to us, but find more funding opportunities to build the things that we want to build. And that sums up my presentation. <laughs> Thank you.
Loving it. Anybody else? Who else would like to share? Feel free. You can come up to the front. We can come to you. Uh, but we'd love to hear any anybody else that wants to share um, and add to the conversation. Just a quick question. I assume you're going to collect all of the our worksheets from tonight. Yeah. Yes. Great question. Anyone else? What else is coming up? Yay. <laughs> I also know the microphone, but uh, since we're recording, um, our group here, and you know, I want to be here to say, great presentation. I don't think we followed all three questions. <laughs> it's just unconclusive, but we got right into the meat of potential projects that we would like to see that could be a benefit. Um, so I'm just going to go right into those, kind of go down the list. If there's others from the group, I would like to add into it, you know, please feel free. Uh, one of the things that's near and dear to my heart is you might be aware of the fact that there is a resolution from the city of Sacramento to eliminate all gas powered landscaping. And so that has not gone to ordinance yet. But United Latinos has recognized the fact that when that goes to ordinance, there are a number of small landscaping businesses who are able to cut the because they just can't help them. But we are looking to see how. Within these structures, we can look at how we can equitably, fairly, and sustainably turn into that electrification of small landscaping businesses like that. Um, getting those utility lines that exist in underinvested uh, communities, especially those without sidewalks and such, and get those buried underground. Number one, for safety reasons, but number two, you know, as an energy pointed out to you, for the beautification of those neighborhoods. How what that might look like, which may go along with tree canopy growth and those kind of things go along with that. Um, they, near and dear to my heart, education of artists to fulfill Prop 28 and what that might look like. Because as they go to Prop 28, which is putting arts education back in the schools, our artists have the opportunity to receive and get that education, that certification, to carry out that artist education for our young people, what that might look like. Removing barriers to education that are geared towards high quality jobs. EDA recompetes in it. I don't know if you want to talk briefly about that, but if I remember correctly, in, in what you have been seeing there, there are 800,000 people in our region who are not in the job force. They are out of the labor force. They're out of the labor force. So, how do we remove the barriers for those people not in the job force, the workforce? to get the education or the training necessary for somebody to create that jobs that are out here. And that's fine. So thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? What else is coming up for you? Um, good evening, everyone. Um, Rob, great job, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so a couple of things um, we talked about, and I guess the first section is uh, discussing any questions you have for the planning team. And I guess one of the things that we were um, thinking about is, I know we're going to come up with a bunch of projects in here. Um, Rob came up with a, with a few of them. So the, I guess all, all questions is, how do we identify which of these projects that we're going to select, um, and who does that? Um, right. Um, so th that that was um one question we um uh, we had um uh, when we talked about shared um projects and initiative opportunities that we may be aware of um or thinking about. We thought about like um creating an EV infrastructure type of pipeline um and with electric vehicle charging stations. Um, and full disclosure, I tell everyone I drive an EV, and there's just not enough um, charging stations for them. And we know that it's a basically the economy of the future, right? And and we know there are dollars out there that if we if we do this right here, there are additional dollars that we can come and kind of like um, leverage to actually build a road infrastructure um, in the state of California, but more specifically for um, the Sacramento um, region here. Um, another thing we, we talked about is um, potentially creating a community health worker um, apprenticeship program where um, those community health workers will actually get paid like 
really, really well, but uh, they'll get people through a, 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 a process of uh, an apprenticeship where they can actually have some um, some really, really good, good, good job and good paying job. We also talked about the center for employment opportunity, CEOs uh, that create like job training, uh, but they, they, they do a lot of it uh, across the board. Rob, you did not talk about apprenticeship, but we do that too. Um, this, I I know, this, excuse me. Um, um, other thing I was talking about is like um, prioritize um, tourism, right, to some extent. Uh, we had a nice convention center, right? But most convention centers have hotels next to them, like free hotels where people can just stay. You can kind of like walk to the hotel um, from the from the convention or whatever it is. We don't have one here in Sacramento, and we need to figure out a way to make sure we get one that um, that is built, operated, run by you. So that's all I have here. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. All right, what else is coming up for y'all? We still have time. What else? Um, I just wanted to add really quick, thank you so much for sharing that. One of the things, what are we going to talk about? Can I oh, touch on? Okay, yeah, great. Right. So we definitely talked about the way that we can strengthen these proposals is also considering childcare transportation. A lot of the population for a time and target, that's a big problem transportation, if we're talking about equity, if we're talking about access, um, and really reaching the hard to reach, those are the things that need to be embedded into proposals. Yes, we can claps around the room for that. Thank you. Anyone else? I just wanted to add, I don't I don't think I did kind of invite it out, but um, to Rob's list, um, the airport is building out not only Terminal A, but adding some new parking. Structure. Um, and to Volna's point, that parking structure is going to require 2,000 EV charging spaces. Like there's a humo humongous opportunity to partner with small businesses supporting that whole build out process, multi billion dollar build out um, at the airport. So let's not forget that one. There's a, and I can add to that, there's actually six projects. Get rid of the fire up at the airport yeah. with Sweet. all those. Um, it's over $1.3 billion worth of construction. But the issue we're having right now is with the county negotiating an agreement for the building trades to be involved in the, the building of that. And they're trying to say, we're just having trouble with negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be aware. Well, this is my first meeting, and I am incredibly impressed with all the exciting opportunities. Awesome, incredible energy in this room. I don't quite have as much energy as that guy right there. <laughs> that was impressive. Um, so but a couple things that we just wanted to bring up. So for a lot of what we talked about, we actually talked about for quite a while, was that how did the projects get advanced question. It seems a little, and I know we've, we've got a guy at our table that's kind of also, you know, he's learning it as well as being on the leadership council. And I know a lot of this is kind of getting built at the same time. But I think one of the things we really wanted to learn more about is what are the other subregions talking about too? And what are the things percolating up from those other subregions? And how can we make sure that we are overlapping, collaborate, collaborating, connecting, right? Because it's feeling a little siloed at this point, and it feels like probably a lot of the same. And I'll use my example, which is in agriculture. You know, we're not Yolo Sacramento with in our new ag hire apprenticeship program for farm workers that's going to be in Spanish to upskill folks in agriculture, that's not just the Yolo Salon, you know, Sacramento, right? So there's certainly potentially other counties. And do we really need to go to every single one of the meetings? I know my my staff right now, we don't have the capacity to go to every single one of those meetings. And I think a lot of you would say the same. So how can we work together with these other subregions to understand what's coming up and how we can work together to create really strong proposals? The other thing that came up was kind of in that project size. You know, there's going to be the kind of fifty to hundred thousand dollar kind of project, but that's probably not what's going to get funded. So how do all these things kind of get put together? It feels right now like we just kind of have a lot of questions around those pieces um, and timelines. So. Yeah, we oh, bundling was the word. 
Yeah. How do we bundle, you know, so many different great projects to, together uh, in order to make the best possible one project or however many projects that will be coming out of the sub region? Thank you so much. All right, we've got one more time. All right, well, all in front. <laughs> Um, the first page of the handout we got here, it says this plan of California jobs first, that will create equitable access or to high quality jobs for our subregion. Uh, so I really want to highlight that part too. The subregion is not just about the city of Sacramento. Uh, what my sister said back there about childcare, transportation, we were talking about that as well, is the people that often are left behind are the ones who don't actually have a way to get to where there's already things happening. Uh, you know, they may not have someone to take care of their family member, right? Um, so to that point, actually, uh, <laughs> we're talking about, you know, where there's like a hub of, of jobs already available, um, there's no reason why we can't have state or federally funded child care centers that are located near that transportation hub where people can actually come to that area where the jobs are and then drop their kids off. Then the people that are taking care of those kids are the ones who actually maybe don't have the skills that are in the tech field or whatnot but maybe they're from disadvantaged communities and you know they're actually helping get them trained um, in not just like childcare, but like other things as well, whether it's workforce development, whatever the case is. I think somebody said finally back there um, to kind of think along those lines, right? Um, but really I wanted to just come up and kind of talk about, uh, you know, like possibilities, like what is possible uh, as I think I've been in a lot of spaces off keeping part in, I've been working with the Chicago movement for the last four years. And in a lot of spaces where we come collaboratively, um, work together, it feels like we're fighting over like crumbs. <laughs> like there's a pie, and there's like four or five percent, 100,000 here, 50,000 here, a couple million here. And we're like trying to figure out how to like make people's lives better with this like little tiny amount, right? Can we even imagine a future where we are now fighting over crumbs, where we're the ones who actually are splitting up the actual pie, right? Um, when the Corbett funding had hit, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Sacramento got $120 million, uh, the county of Sacramento, uh, for upliftment of the community, right? Every single penny of that $120 million went to the Sheriff's Department. And this was voted by the Board of Supervisors. Um, did any of us, not in, just in this room or the people that are working on community, all these things, can any of us like fight? Do you even imagine that was a possibility to maybe take back some of that funding? Um, I don't know. It, it was, I definitely found out after the fact when uh, it hit the Sacramento B. I had no idea. So I was like, wow, that, that's insane. Um, you know, right now, the fourth measure fell past in Sacramento. Um, the youth funding, uh, it was going to be run through gay preventive programs. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, we need that. But we don't need our game prevention people designing arts and crafts for kids who are not in games, right? Uh, we were talking about uh, parks and rec. Uh, the parks and rec should be designing like events and reaching out to community and all this because they're already so overworked with the upkeep of whatever the beautiful spaces are around in the areas. So, do we actually even have the um, uh, imagination to think of? Not outsourcing this work to like some corporation that's going to come in and magically attract in this area. Can we actually do it ourselves? Right? Can we actually set aside, uh, I don't want to say department because that comes with a lot of like baggage, but you know, something where there are people that are actually living in this area and it's not some like board of members that are in a different state that are looking at the bottom line, that we are the ones actually designing these that are happening, that we're the ones who. Are deciding where you know, the pie is being allocated and not just that little five percent section of that pie. How are we going to do this, right? Um, so for me, you know, I, I work as a community organizer, right? 
we do like 10 different jobs, to be honest. We are, we're, we're, we're like, uh, um, we, we, we think of programs for the community, we do outreach to the community, we do the execution of the programs, we do the follow-ups of the programs, like literally like 10 different jobs, right? Different ways that our uh, city, our, our, our county can't have, uh, again, I hate to use the word department, but I, don't, I can't think of a better word right now, but like something that is that is high, we're actually like designing programs or events or whether they're about health, whether about jobs, whether they're about just having fun, entertainment, and then people that are working with the community can actually work on organizing, right? So, you know, for, to use the example we shared in our group, you know, the people that work at Parks and Rec, yeah, they're like designing the event, but they're not going to be doing outreach, calling people uh, in the, you know, six, seven at night. They're not going to be doing the follow up after the event. Hey, how was it? How did it go? Did you enjoy it? But they're, they're gonna do the job, right? They're gonna post it on the the, the social media of their county, whatever, and whoever comes comes, you know. And there's no like actual intention to build up the community that I had seen at least. I may be wrong, but I don't know. That's just something I, I, I want to share is like what is possible even? Can we can expand our imagination? Uh, so for the folks that are on the leadership council, when you all are having these conversations, you know, uh, that you're not just taking like a line here or a line here from this. Is that to actually expand the conversation of the way to put some magic to set a company to come to our area and to come to the location? We actually want the resource to jump in there ourselves. And there are plenty of people in Sacramento here that are ready and ready, and literally all we need is just some That's it. Thank you for having me. You're in the community organizer coming out, so we're going to have to get you to come out. So, really appreciate it. Um, okay, do we have a couple? We have a couple more minutes for. Um, so I don't know who in the group of presenters can maybe help wrap our brain around this, or maybe I'm the only one struggling with it, but I think I'm having a hard time coming up with projects that are at a point where they could be funded, because it seems like we have a lot of ideas, but it also seems like this is not a planning grant, this is an execution pot of money. So are we trying to find projects that are literally already stood up and like on a bookshelf and we just pull it off and then Fund it because I think that's where I'm having a hard time coming up with projects. And like, at, at what point? I guess a good example would be the Alchemist project. At what point were they in planning when they decided to apply for these funds? I'm just curious. Let's have them turn up one slide. We had a slide for that. We had yeah. like a slide that showed the different project right Oh yeah. yeah. I'm trying to uh, answer a few questions that have come out today. Is that for me? No, that's for me. My bad. Okay. This is my answer to the question that you have. So there's different ways of categorizing projects with your exploratory. So it's not fully fleshed out project yet. Black mile, like it just needs a little bit more funding to get it there and then ready to go, which is like Alchemist, it was ready to go. And so different types of the state funding are uh, will be available for different types of this. So you'll see that if you can go back, if you can go to the slide you're just at. So the catalyst, it's uh, named kind of under that section on the left, the catalyst funding can be used for those two types of projects. And that is being allocated now. That is um, to uh, somebody else's question, uh, secure within the state budget. That catalyst funding pot for our region is secure. The implementation uh, phase funding is secure-ish, meaning that it's gonna go out as um, in three phases over the next three fiscal years. So the allocation for the coming year is secure. Uh, supposedly the next two fiscal years are secure. So instead of it all going out at once, it will go out in three phases. Um, supposedly it's secure, but I would say it's secure-ish because it has to be reallocated each year. So that may answer two questions that were asked. I think there were more questions than that, but now I can't remember them. Yeah. <laughs> what type of jobs, careers, and industries are we trying to create impact? So we currently are working with a research partner, which is Brookings Institution and Cities GPS, and they're doing a 
significant research project, which will be open source and available to any everyone, where you will be able to look at the breakdown of um, industries across the full region, which that stuff came up region versus sub region. I don't want to forget to address that. You'll be able to look at the information across the, the full region that we have for the capital region, and then also for the sub regional breakouts. So to the questions that were asked, I think Mary asked and others, which was, you know, if our project or the work that we do goes across from one sub-region into the next, how is that going to be addressed? So a couple of different things with that. We're going to be re releasing a project portal coming up, which is why um, part of uh, the team that's working in the Sacramento region wanted to talk about projects with y'all today. There will be a project portal that will be released soon, and that's really just going to inventory projects, project ideas, and then we'll be doing that across all sub-regions so that we can kind of look and see where are there similarities in projects that our folks are looking at. So um, it, there are not these artificial boundaries between Sac Yolo and Placer and El Dorado and those sorts of things. If there's if there are projects that look like they can be advanced as a larger subset of the region or as the region as a whole, then we would want to connect project partners to do that. So bundling, I think, was also mentioned. So we're meeting in these sub-regions in order to facilitate getting you all connected and not having to drive so far, but there are not necessarily these boundaries, SAC, YOLO, Palooza, different boundaries like that. We'll be looking at it all as a whole and trying to connect partners to advanced projects. And I think there are a bunch of other questions, right? <laughs> Who identifies the projects to select? Who does that? So a couple things on that. The Leadership Council will be looking at a, developing a project criteria. That hasn't happened yet. They just had their first meeting, got to know each other, and looked at a little bit of the early data. That's it. That's all that's happened. So if you met somebody from the Leadership Council, don't, don't jam them up. They need to have more meetings. <laughs> Uh, secondly, um, so there will so they'll be coming up with the project criteria. Um, information that will come out of these subregional convenings will also influence that project criteria. So be looking to continue to engage here and influence that project criteria. The actual selection for projects that get funded will actually happen if it's state funded. So the funds are allocated through California Jobs First. The state will actually be funding the projects. It won't be decided by um, any of us. If we're going to be helping shepherd it to meet the criteria that the state is looking for. And we don't know for sure if they'll be looking for an endorsement from a collaborative or the region. They could, but we don't know that. We haven't seen the final project criteria for what they're going to be looking like at for applications. Who at the state? Which, which department or who at the state is going to be financial? Well, that's a good question because um, California Jobs First is an initiative of a couple of different entities together. So um, it's the labor organization as well as GoBiz and I think Go. Uh, OPR. OPR. Yeah. The timeline for the funding and the phase that we're working on here. So I'm going to ask you if you have. Uh, uh, we're expected to get more information from the states, uh, so that information is forthcoming. We'll be able to share that once we have it. The information is forthcoming from the state. Do we anticipate funding next fiscal year then, or this fiscal year? American said, you know. Um, sure. I'm just going to be clear of your key, like um, Renee mentioned, but um, for the implementation funding, that's extended through 2027. And once we get more information from the state, we'll be able to share that with our subregion club leaders. Uh, the funding for the catalyst free development phase, that's unaffected. So, and when the implementation funding is extended to 2027, that doesn't mean that it's not being, there's going to be some funds that will be split out in the thirds. So, a third of it will be released now, and then another third, and then another third. The second two thirds. Our, you know, each budget year has a, its own process. Exactly. But more broadly, so for those that aren't used to like the grant process or putting together proposals, can we get some guidance on the timeline rolling out of the money so that we can line up our proposals 
at the right time. So that first phase, I guess we have to be ready to go by March, but you know, like projects that are being discussed now, their needs may be different in fiscal year 2027, right? So like it's finer how we're gonna forecast that. So that's where some guidance might be helpful for this group. Yeah, and we have uh we have definitely elevated to the state as soon as we can get the the de, you know definitive criteria that our regions and subregions are planning for that information. They know that we're not the only region asking for that. So um we are hesitant to estimate, you know, to put something out there that we don't know for sure. We do know that they have clearly communicated those four values that we went over earlier, and those are actually not new four values either. They've been embedded in the HRTP grants and other processes. So those four core values are what I would focus on for your projects. I think if I would be very surprised, and I've heard this directly from state leadership, that they would be surprised if anything significantly changed in the priorities. There may be some additional or smaller, you know, criteria that gets added or adjusted, but those four values are expected to stay the same. I wish I could give you a definitive timeline. Uh, I think in the meantime, like one of the proposals our group suggested, how do we strengthen stuff? I a consolidated like database of other grants that might be out there and they either uh you know in the time in between might be helpful so that you know like projects could move and then we can assess what still needs to be funded right so like that way we're accessing funding all the available funding yes absolutely and in fact that's um your tessa's dream come true and something that we've been really wanting to work toward is to get this inventory of projects and then also inventory of funding sources and so that we're kind of functioning as a hub together and just gathering and, and collating this information. One of the things that we were talking about at the table that I was at, and might have come up in some of your other tables, is that sometimes when this region has advanced applications, especially national applications, we haven't been as competitive as other regions because we have advanced multiple applications that are competing against each other. And sometimes even have the same partners listed or say, for instance, Fresno, Fresno advanced one collaborative application, it's got 20 organizations listed on it. Everybody's together in it. And then they see three or five applications from coming from the capital region that are listing each other and are stepping on each other. And so when those are the options, the funder is going to go with who looks like they have their act the most together. And so we haven't represented strongly in this region. So part of this process is for us to get better at that. And you know, it's been a competitive environment. Somebody said scarcity or something earlier, or something similar to that. And that that is true. Maybe the juice or maybe that is true. And we have we have to figure that out. Uh, but the strongest applications that are getting funded, especially from the national level, which we don't want to just use state funds, but national funds. Any kind of funding that's available is are going to be collaborative. Yeah. And we have time for one more question. I see Richard over there. Do you mind just speaking up and then we'll we'll close out our debrief? Absolutely. Do you break one of the 148 million for the catalyst type of projects? Is that that's a statewide number? Is there any determination as to will that be split up evenly? Who gets the most money? Who gets what pots? That question. And the second is for these types of projects and opportunities, is the funds reimbursable or will it be paid up front for the implementation? I'm going to ask her to make That's a great question. <laughs> so for the implementation fund dollars, for competing at the state level uh, for funding, when we look at the catalyst fund dollars, um, our region applied to the state for a grant of $14 million, of which $9 million is allocated towards redevelopment dollars. So um, in terms of, uh, we hope to be able to share some news um, once the state makes an announcement regarding the Catalyst Fund grant, grants um, workies. Um, hopefully it'll be good news for our region. Um, and uh, I, I think that uh, for, the, for the Catalyst Fund, um, we're we're deciding where those dollars are going to be. We're not competing at the state level. Um, when we look at the, when we look at that comparison to implementation dollars. And as to reimbursable? I don't know those details. 
Thank you. We're, we're documenting all of the questions, and I just appreciate it. Would you want to just give yourselves a round of applause? <laughs> We are not stopping here. We prosper together, right? I heard a couple of things. How do we dream big? How are we creating the world that we want to see in our communities, invest in our communities? So I just want to thank you all from uh, the bottom of my heart. This, this is exactly why we're doing this, and, and you all are a part of that. So uh, we're going to move to wrap up. I'm going to bring Annette up here. Um, so just a couple more minutes, and then we promise we'll get you out of here as soon as we can. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, so, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so last, last kind of things um, for you guys like that. Like we're right, right at the chin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I chat. Sorry for those in the front row. Uh, okay. uh, next up, regional committee meeting date. For anyone, if you found this evening to be valuable, we wanted it to be in person. So kudos to all of you for being here. There was such great synergy and conversation in the room. But we recognize that not everyone was able to join us. So we're going to do a part two. It's going to be virtual. It'll be shorter, smaller group um, on the 30th. So look for that invitation. It'll go out after this one if you want to share that with people that you think should be part of the conversation and weren't already. Or you walk away today and say, oh my gosh, I have this great idea. Here's what we need to do. You can join us on the 30th. Um, we've got some ongoing community and industry specific roundtables um, coming up here through January, um, February, all the way into early March. Um, so there's going to be other opportunities for you to engage. Um, my team is leading the business uh, sector roundtables, so the industry specific ones that we're doing. Um, primarily in February, where we really want to get this it says, at the table to find out what projects, what the same exercise you went through today, you want to do a deep dive with those representing different industry sectors, like manufacturing, like construction, healthcare, like what projects are out there, what makes sense from their perspective. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to do, a, a, once we do all the industry sector roundtables, we're going to bring everyone back together. Um, become a consensus. So some of the questions that you had around how do we select the projects? What do we put forward? What did um, you know? What did manufacturing tell us compared to what construction told us? We're going to be um, have a convening at the Sac State Alumni Center on March 19th. We're offering breakfast 8 to 12. Um, we're going to do a report out of what we've heard from the industry specific roundtables, as well as um, kind of some consensus and do some design building while we're in the room together. So super excited about that opportunity. You're more than welcome to join us. Um, next slide. Can I just have a question? Yes. On the industry specific roundtables, are those just for SACIOLO or are those going to be throughout the eight? Those are for yeah. SACIOLO. And we really hope Ad is one of those. Oh, yeah, we'll be there. I was just hoping it would could be. I eight, know. I eight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think you're talking through. I have no problems like inviting the others. Yeah, it's all virtual. A whole lot of folks. Right. It's all virtual. So we can. We'll just we'll talk it through about the okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um. Okay. Valley Vision is going to be sharing the project forum. Thank you for your questions and input. Um, we some of the questions we have too, um, just because we are building this plane and we're flying it and hoping for the best. Um, we do know that the money, the funds are available. We know that something will be funded. What that finally looks like and whatever the forms and all that kind of stuff are is still up in the air. But Valley Vision is doing a great job at providing that information as soon as it's available. And then, oh, the research updates. Okay, this is my favorite one. The big, the best thing that comes out of this entire process. Um, I think we uh, alluded to it a couple of times about the Brookings Institute and City GPS and the work that they're doing for Valley Vision. I was privileged to see a preview of some of the data, and it is it's groundbreaking for us. It gives us a deep dive into our communities that we've never had before. Um, and to show the granular level of like what does it really mean to have a good quality job in 
how much money does someone really need to make to live and work in Sacramento or Yellow County, right? And not just like meet your basic needs, but be able to like save money, go on vacation, send your kids to college, whatever you want to do. Oh, and then maybe retire and have a decent retirement and, you know, whatever, whatever that means for you. Um, so super exciting to be able to share that with all of you. I think sometime in February is the target um, to get all that done. Quarter one. Quarter one. We don't have an exact date. Quarter so one. Four months or first. Okay. So <laughs> hopefully before the 19th. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah, maybe. before the 19th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so the quarter. But it's a huge undertaking, um, as you can imagine, doing that kind of data and really making sure that it's accurate and that what they're recording is what actually is happening. So there's that, I think, is that on the slide? <clears throat> oh, okay. So compensation guidelines for those that are interested in participating, there's a QR code to get to the guidelines. You can be paid for your time here if you've already registered. If this is your first time here, you can go ahead and register. Um, and be paid $50 for attending today. Um, if you have questions, my colleague Kathy is the expert in our compensation guidelines and she is there to answer any questions for you. Okay. I have a quick question. Yeah. Could everybody involved with, I guess, you know, uh, value uh, vision and then all the partners, you know, kind of introduce themselves so we know who, who and for the future, you know, we have you. I think everybody did except me. I was like, yes, you can do that. Okay. Um, but there's one more slide that I think will help with that. So, I am an ex Smith. Uh, I am the business liaison, if you will. Um, I'm a consultant with the Asian Chamber, Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce, um, tasked with leading this work in the Sacramento region to. Um, really get our businesses at the table and involved in the conversations. And then of course we have Catherine Nanda, who is doing a fantastic job um, from uh, Civic Thread, who's doing a fantastic job of uh, bringing the community to the table. And do you want to? Yeah, yeah, we're the director of Civic Thread. Um, as an mentioned, we're kind of working on the community side to make sure that the projects that are put forward have that entity lens and are meeting the workers and learners that we know can be done at the Absolutely. Anyone else? Can I introduce you? Uh, Renee John from Valley Vision, one of the managing directors. Chris Shelley is our other managing director. Uh, Evan Schmidt is our CEO. And then this is our senior project manager in charge of this project. Hi, I'm Marie Tessa. Okay, we have a couple other folks from Valley Vision right here. Can you introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Gustavo, project coordinator. Hello, I'm Dominic, project associate. Oh, yeah. Adrian Wren, I, I'm here as a community member, but I got pulled into notes. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the subject team, we also have Sherelle Grant in the back. She's uh, one of our newest team members and on our team to support the facility community engagement. We're joined by our partner at Black Artist Foundry. Every day I'm back consulting, my two, and then after the others, I'm helping you to be and we have another person running an office who's actually here from Yellow County. He's uh, the CEO for Civic Well, who is helping us um, do some of this work. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions for the good of the group? There was a question about the compensation guidelines. Um, can Kevin, can you go to the difference between the collaborative members, uh, $75 payment and $50 payment? <clears throat> um, there are compensation guidelines from the states that we need to follow to the letter. So it just turns out that the way that we categorize meetings and the link means that people who are already a part of the collaborative, which you will know if you are, um, if you are not sure, you can talk to me afterwards. Um, but a meeting of this link results in $75 for collaborative members if you are not already registered at $50. Um, moving forward, we would love if everybody joins the collaborative. It just seems coming to these sub-regional roundtables and engaging in the search process. Um, there is some documentation that we would need to do that. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I can help initiate that process. It will be Valley Vision, um, their coordinating that intake form. Um, I will be sending out a follow-up email um, with those details. So if you look at the guidelines, it'll you know, detail exact steps. So you don't have to do it right now. But. 